working in Cambodia. It's possible to have a kayak with a big, large, some building space. Oh yeah. And an umbrella. Okay, maybe these girls are a bit new to kayaking, but that didn't dampen their enthusiasm. A short bumpy ride upriver brought them to our hosts, Eddie and Marin. This was a new venture for Eddie and Marin, who purchased the kayaks in Thailand, brought them overland into Cambodia, and then donated them to a local school. Their goal was to set up a sustainable tourist venture that was run by the locals. We were the first paying customers, the test dummies, so to speak. Neither girl had ever kayaked before, and Maro didn't even know how to swim. Did I mention test dummies? This would be a three to four hour downstream paddle on the timid Sankur River. The river is the lifeblood of the community and sustains a lot of agriculture on its banks. The chatter of water pumps irrigating the fields is constant. So are the sounds of children playing and swimming. Three percent of the people in Cambodia are practicing Buddhists. This is a Muslim village. They only make up three to five percent of the population. The river is also a source of fish farming in a primitive form. Branches are placed along the shore so fish school and hide under them. Later the area will be netted off and the fish harvested. After an hour Christina needs to stretch and take a water break. Manuela, on the other hand, stayed in the kayak, not wanting to get in and out. After a short break, they're off with a vengeance. How on earth can you get lost on a river? Or lose the map? Like everywhere in the world, boys love to show off. Even little boys. is plentiful and varied. And service was good too. All right, good boy. Hitchhikers came in all sizes. Girls seemed happy to finish the trip as they headed off to the bus stop bar, leaving us to pack up. And the river kids went 